All right. Happy Friday, Floss Tube. <laughs> this is my friend Tracy. You've met her before. Hi, that's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. So we are on our twice yearly stitching retreat. Yes. So I was lucky enough to be here with Tracy this weekend. She's my roommate. So I thought that I would drag her in and make her be part of Friday off the grid floss tube. So she was she was willing. <laughs> Very willing, right? So sure. we I thought about trying to do a stitch with me with Tracy, but the setup in the room here isn't ideal. And so I thought instead I'm going to share, well, Tracy's going to share what she's working on. We'll chat a little bit about the couple of projects that she's got um, here to work on this weekend that are so colorful and beautiful. And, uh, and then I'll flip it over and I'll do just a few extra minutes of stitch with me um, chatter because there were some great comments in the last Friday video that I thought we could uh, we could chat a little bit about. So I'm gonna switch the camera over so that we can have a peek at <laughs> Tracy's work. All right. So what do you want to start with? Do oh. you want us? I'm. Uh, how about we scroll over here? Ooh, look at that. All right, so tell me about this. This is uh, Lavender and Lace, correct? Yes, Lavender and Lace. It's called In the Arms of an Angel. There's the... the so that's... That, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Look at that dress. I've had it for a while, and I started stitching it, and I let it go for a few years, and now I'm getting back to it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, enjoy, I enjoy Lavender and Lace patterns. They're so detailed. Mm-hmm. Are you using the called for colors? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I do use the called for colors, and I probably even got the called for material at the time, I, whatever it was. So it's a linen 32, do you think, or is it 28? Um, Let me see if I can. 32. It's a 32. Yeah, that's yeah, nice yeah. coverage there. Two strands? Yeah, two over two. Two over two. And it was Willow Green Belfast Linen. It's Willow Green Belfast Linen. That's no, if she it, no, if it's not Willow Green, it's the closest thing that my local that Kathy would have had. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was always really good at substitutions. If she didn't have it, she'd help you pick out something else. Mm hmm. Uh, that's lovely. And look at that. It's kind of long. So, what do you hope to do on it this weekend? Um, work a little bit more on the, like, right here okay. and get to the red, because I want to play with the red and the gold. Oh, that would be beautiful. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, I just, I just like the color changes and that's, uh, because it's just so pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, I look forward to you getting to that red. I'll be keeping an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right. Okay, so this is your floss box, correct? This is the floss box for the for the angel, the lavender and lace angel. That's I love how colors. you have that organized. Tracy, uh, OCD, is always so much more organized than me. Yeah. Not that I'm giving away any secrets about myself or anything, but my floss box box does not look like this. <laughs> you oh, yeah. are an I I aspire to be like Tracy. So beautiful. Beautiful DMC colors there, and you're you're all. Do you have all of the beads that are needed? Yes. Okay, so you're ready to go. Yeah, everything's ready. To I go. don't know why you haven't started beading yet. I uh, usually myself. I usually say that till the end. I know. I'm just teasing you. It should be done by now. Yes. <laughs> all right. Now let's focus in on. First of all, before we get to the stitching, I have to focus in on your needle minder here first because. What, can you tell me about this adorable dog in a Halloween costume here? Yeah, my um, my dog, I would call, uh, her name is Boo. Um, she's a rescue <laughs> dog, and she hates having things put on her, so I put on this purple dragon costume, <laughs> and she just stood there and looked at me. So that's why it's, it took a picture, and, of course, I got the... Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, needle. who made the needle minder for you? Um, is it Lisa from No More Lost Needles? Okay, so No More Lost Needles. And now she sells through a Facebook group? That's Through the Facebook group. You okay. have to request to join the Facebook group. And then you can order needles, because uh, needle minders. And that's my second order, because I have a bunch of from before my Gerard Butler. Gerard one. Butler. And that's where I got my McSteamy and McDreamy from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no more lost needles, and her name is Lisa, and I think it's Lisa S. Stitching is her. Is that her Facebook name? I, I I'm not sure. Remember. I'll try to look that up and and put that in here. It's going to be a busy weekend, so if I don't get to the notes section, 
Um, I'll do my best to get back to it on Monday. But that's super cute. And so she made that for you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, she's in the UK. Yes, she is. Yeah. But her prices are pretty reasonable, even with oh, the yeah. exchange rates. So. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, now tell me about your stitching. This, because uh, I participated in the Flasmus, um, they start doing one ornament a day, start one ornament a day. Yeah. I used, um, from my Just Cross Stitch Christmas magazines over the years, I picked picked uh, some out of each one of them. And this, this one is my 15th one I'm working on to get finished, because I would like to have a few of them on my tree for next year so awesome now Tracy is on our Facebook group that's the Friday off the grid Facebook group and she has been posting her Flossmas ornament finishes on there so if you see Tracy um, posting this will this will be Flossmas day this was 14 or 15 this 15? is number 15 yeah, 15 yeah then you'll recognize who she is and you can uh, you can say hello over on the Facebook group this is gonna be a snowman on yes. the inside, correct? Yeah, it's the frosty with the hat on and it's got the room for his orange nose right there. Very cute. And now tell me about your floss. I've got it from Threadworks. Um, this is a special one. Yeah, thread, uh, the Threadworks. Okay. It, it's a, the Christmas one. And it's really pretty because oh, it's red and green. Look at that color work. Oh, that's neat. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's what it looks like on the skein. And yeah. then as you can see stitched up, you've just got that that shading from tone into tone. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's a great way to use up something unusual. Yes. You know? And um, I just worked with what I had in my stash. I didn't go out and buy anything so I could use up some of my stash. stash. Yeah. That was perfect flossmas stitching. Yes. Well done. Excellent. And another little organized box. Yeah, this. For your Flossmas ornaments. No, this is all the colors I used for all my ornaments. So that's. That's really, really good. So it's. I little... love how you've got your. Um... <sighs> now, is this a Krynik? What this is? What is this? Bijou. That's Bijou, right? It's Bijou, yeah. Uh, accent? Accentuate? Yeah, is accentuate. It? Right, yeah. okay. And so this is slightly thinner mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a little easier to work with than yes. Krynik at times. Yeah, and this is like the DMC version. I've worked with that. You know, that's that's just as bad. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's... But it looks good mm -hmm. when it's stitched up. And it's I maybe a... just a little finicky. Yeah, I have a few of them, and I just want to get yeah. use them, use use them up. That's yeah. good. And then I like the, the chapstick in the corner there. So uh, very important at this time of year. Yes. Yeah. All right. You have got some box full of goodies in here. I love to see your work. And uh, I'm looking forward to sitting beside you for the rest of the weekend. Yes. And, you know, sharing a room, roomie. Uh -oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some work to do. Yes, we do. All right. Well, thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. I'm back. And... I'm probably going to try and keep this, <laughs> I always say this, I'm going to keep it brief, I'm going to keep it brief today, and then I pull a Caroline and I talk for an hour. So um, I definitely have some things to talk about today, but I'm, um, you know, my friends are all out in the other room, and since this is Friday morning, it's the first morning of our, we usually come up on the Thursday, there's six of us or so who come up a day early, and uh we enjoyed stitching together last night, but the rest of the group is now starting to show up. I think we have 17 people coming up this weekend, so looking forward to seeing some old friends. Uh, Miss Patty is the one who organizes this retreat along with her daughter Carrie and our friend Joanne as well, and the three of them just do a phenomenal job organizing and getting us uh, getting us all together it's a lot of fun okay so before I get into the comments and questions from last uh, it was I didn't do a Friday video last week but so two Fridays ago I'll address the elephant in the room first which would be my hair yes my hair is straight today shocking I know it looks very unusual I look very strange uh, I have it done like three times a year uh, when I get my hair done because it's a special treat. <laughs> I have very curly hair and I am I have never been able to do a very good job straightening it myself. It ends up looking like a big huge mushroom cloud 
So when I, the rare occasion that I go in and get um, my color done, uh, I, I again, I'm saying three times a year, I probably should have it done once or twice extra, but because it's curly, it tends to hide it quite well. And I'm a bit lazy when it comes to things like that. And I'll look in the mirror one day and I think, ooh, I probably should have gone in a while ago to have that done. But anyways, uh, it's straight. As soon as I wash my hair again, it will spring back to the normal curls. Um, I can normally get about four, four to five days out of it. And that's just because that's how my hair is. I simply can't wash it every day. Anyways, enough about that. Enough about hair. You came here to stitch and hello, happy Friday. Isn't Tracy sweet? We've been good friends for a very long time. We met through Thread and I, through this retreat, I believe. No, actually, I think we knew each other before the first retreat. And I hadn't even had Nicholas yet. So I'm going to say we've been friends for at least 12, 12 to 15 years I've known Tracy. And she's just, she's a lovely human. All right, what am I doing next here? Let's see. Okay. Um, so I'll get right into the comments from the last video and qu a few questions. First of all, um, I'll, this was a question from June, June Williams. And I thought this was a really interesting one. June asks, she says, I've been a cross stitcher for 40 years. I always stitch my X top left to bottom right, and you're going to notice that that's actually what I'm doing right now. This is bottom. No, it's not. Forgive me. I'm, I'm a liar. Uh, she says she stitches bottom, no, top left to bottom right, and then bottom left to top right. Is there a right or wrong way? I notice you stitch it opposite. I also work all my stitches from the top until I anchor my thread. Love your podcast and glad to be getting back to my old projects. And yes, aren't, you know, getting back to old projects really does feel good, doesn't it? I agree with you there, June. Uh, so is there a right way and a wrong way? No, there isn't. It doesn't, uh, to me, it doesn't matter where you start your X. The only thing that matters is that the top leg of your stitch is always going the same direction. So you'll notice that my top leg is leaning to the left this way. And so that way, all of my stitches have the top leg leaning to the left. I tend to travel whichever way on my stitch makes the most sense to use the least amount of thread. I'm always thinking about, you know, how, how long, how many stitches can I eke out of this one length of thread. So at the moment, my stitches are going top right, bottom left, bottom right, top left. But now I'm moving over one row to the left. So I'm gonna start my stitch the same way, or is it different? I'm not exactly, I don't remember what I just did. And then top left to bottom right because I'm traveling down. So I always tend to take the hole that's going to lead me where I'm going as long as my top leg is always going the right direction. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no right or wrong way. It's your stitching. And if you're happy with it and it looks neat and tidy to your eye, then keep doing what you're doing. It's working. If you want to improve the look of your stitch, there's several different things you can do. You can, um, if, you, if your stitches are all going the wrong way, but you're not happy with how your threads are laying, you can do something called railroading. Lots of people do this. Uh, every stitch that they take, they will do this technique called railroading, which simply means you take your needle and you divide, if you're stitching two strands or three strands or four strands, you take your needle and you put it in between 
where the threads are. So you can see, I'm gonna separate that up a little bit. And then you put your needle through the threads into the hole like that. I hope you can see that. So you can see I've split the threads, not split the thread itself, but divided them up. Then you put the needle in the hole. And then as you pull, your working thread keeps those threads open and then as you lay it they tend to lie a little more flat. Now because this is something this is I know this is going to be an ornament that's going to sit and probably gather dust during the holiday season I'm not overly concerned with the appearance of how my stitches are laying. I simply want this to be done. No one's going to be looking at it that closely, so I'm not going to bother railroading anything here. Okay, so June, I hope that answered your question. Whatever way works for you is the right way. So thanks for leaving me a comment and a question. All right, uh, moving on. Oh, um, what only because this next one was the was the one right below June's, and I thought it was funny. This is from Nevada Stitcher. And uh, she left me a lovely comment. And at the end of it, she, obviously, Nevada Stitcher, she says, living in the desert southwest of the U.S., it's hard to imagine the cold that it takes for trekking across the ice water to be possible. Yikes. Have a great weekend. And yes, that is, that's the truth of the matter. It is cold enough. And in fact, this year, uh, the bay where the cottage is has now entirely frozen over and that doesn't happen every year so that uh, that's quite quite interesting and the ice is very very thick and very safe I'm just not a fan if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about because you've missed the last few episodes uh, my husband took the kids over to the cottage the last few weekends and the cottage is on an island so they snowshoe over the ice to get there and yes, he did have the flu. When he was there, he uh, came down with a, with a bit of the flu and it was a bit miserable for him, but he managed to make it home and uh, after a few days was on the mend. And, and just to address that briefly, uh, we do get the flu shot. We do have the flu shot here in Canada. We do, my family, we believe in vaccines. Um, I am not going to debate this in the comments, so I'm just going to keep this really brief. We do believe in vaccines. We do vaccinate. We do get the flu shot every year. The flu shot isn't a be-all and end-all. It's not going to protect you against every single strain of the flu, uh, but it, you know, it's important. We we believe in the importance of herd mentality, protecting our more vulnerable members of the population, and it's most likely going to lessen the effects of the flu if you do if you are unlucky enough to uh, get a strain of the flu and that was I believe the case with with my guys Sarah was down for three and a half four days and John was about the same and uh, they are both back and up and healthy and in fighting form and touch wood Nicholas neither Nicholas or I have gotten anything. So, touch wood. All right, moving on. Uh-oh, I just lost my, I lost my questions here. Hang on a second. Okay, next, and this is, I love this question. This is funny. It has nothing to do with stitching. This is Gail. And Gail says, Caroline, love the comment section. I have a non-stitching question. How do you drink your coffee? Black, cream, creamer, sugar, chocolate, or maybe Kahlua, maybe a combo. I um, I do love some Baileys in my coffee, uh, but that's at Christmas time. I drink Baileys at Christmas time in my coffee. I don't like to carry my thread too far. Now, here, and I, I'm interrupting my own question here. So just to show you, these are the, I didn't tell you anything about my project, did I? 
Uh, this is a, one of those pre-finished Ada frames. It's a 14 count Ada with, you can see it's kind of got this natural sort of flecked look to it. It's really pretty. They're very inexpensive. At Michael's they came in a three pack and I can't remember the brand name that was on it, but it was one of those, you know, in-store house brand kind of things. Uh, you know, they're not the best quality. You can tell the frame is a little flimsy, which, and as you work it, the, the fabric itself does tend to stretch just a little bit. So when I finish this, I'm going to tuck some cardstock in here right up against the finished stitching so that it helps keep it flat. And then I'll put some beautiful fabric on the outside to finish it off. Uh, the one downside to these guys is that it is it can be difficult to end your threads or sew your threads in because this frame gets in the way, right? Which makes sense. When I stitch on a Q-snap or a hoop, if I were to stitch on a hoop, I would have my fabric orientation the other way around so that the outside of the frame was on the top so that I'm stitching in the ditch. And then by doing that, when you flip it over, you've got a nice flat flush surface that allows you to really easily so in your ends. So that is the one slightly annoying thing about working on this canvas. That's about it. Other than that, it's a ton of fun because it's so cute and quick and I can just tell it's going to be finished up. Lickety split. Okay, so how do I drink my coffee? Well, as you can see, I have today, I have just some black coffee here and that is not, that's not by choice. Drinking black coffee is not my preferred way to drink coffee. I usually like to have some milk and sweetener. And at the moment, I'm really trying to kick my sweetener habit because I use too much of it. I also am a fan of Diet Coke, which you know has aspartame in it. I do not like, oh no, um, they have a, what's the new one called? Coke Life or something that has Splenda. I'm not a fan. So, the combination of aspartame in the Diet Coke and uh, Splenda in my coffee is, it's, it's, I'm trying to cut back. I am trying to cut back. It's better for my health. But that is my preferred way to drink coffee. Milk and sweetener. So thanks, Gail. Thanks for a non-stitching question. Always happy to answer those too. And moving along. Okay, so this next one this is going to take a few minutes, so settle in. I hope you've got your coffee and your stitching. I am actually going to read the entire comment here from, and I'm going to really butcher your YouTube name here. Ken Shinonitafani. I, I, I hope I came even somewhat close to getting that right. Okay, so this is a really, really long comment. So I'm going to have to stop stitching for a moment so that I can uh, read and then we can discuss in a moment. Okay, so uh, here we go. There is a lot of elitism in the stitching community, be it on Facebook or YouTube. People look down their noses at DMC, Ada, and hoops. I taught myself how to stitch with a kit from Hobby Lobby in 2011. I didn't know about the cross stitch community online. I didn't know about online retailers or Etsy or anything like that. It wasn't until 2015 that I found floss tube and the wonderful potential of an LNS. I was in heaven, but I learned quickly that it was an expensive heaven. And I'm just interjecting here because isn't that the truth? I distinctly remember some people I looked up to in the community talk down about anything that wasn't hand dyed and or silk. It was discouraging because I just didn't have the income to support something like that. The same was said for fabric. I could get some cheap Ada at Hobby Lobby, but ew, Ada. You wanted to have linen, even weave, hand dyed preferably. There was a time when I didn't start anything on regular white or cream fabric. It was all hand dyed so that I could feel like I belonged. I think I drew the line on floor frames. I remember when everyone was ordering a millennial. I got a cheap floor frame from Hobby Lobby on clearance and I found that I just didn't like it as much as stitching with a hoop. 
Once again, I felt like the odd one out because hoops are outdated. I didn't like using a Q-snap either. I was always terrified of my stitches or fabric getting caught trying to take those clamps off. 2017 was the year that I decided to heck with it. I love my hobby and I won't let anyone tell me what I am enjoying using is wrong or lesser. I love using Ada for full coverage pieces. I prefer DMC because it's reliable and easy to obtain. I will be an in-hoop stitcher for life and all of that is okay. Now I think, and this is me again just interjecting, I think this last sentence here is the crux of it right here. I don't believe this is a phenomena that exists strictly in the stitching community. It's pervasive. I hope someday we can get to a point where we stop feeling like we're better than other people within our communities just because our tastes are different. And I think, I think that right there is, that's, that's the nail on the head right there because it is, that's kind of what life can feel like at times, right? The whole keeping up with the Joneses or, you know, wanting that next new shiny thing. And all of a sudden when we see someone else has that nice new shiny thing, what we have doesn't look so nice and shiny anymore. And, you know, I'm, I can't speak to other floss tubers or, or, or face people on Facebook or, you know, the community at large making people feel bad or less than, or what you have is not good enough. I, I'm not going to speak to that. Um, I'm simply going to talk about this from my perspective, uh, and my feelings and, um, you know, there's a there is a great really great what's the word statement or not not a platitude that's not the right word that I'm looking for it's just a, a phrase uh, comparison is the thief of joy and I think that that's really apt here comparing ourselves and comparing what we have to others can always, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter if it's the new purse that you just bought yourself that you're so happy with and you feel really good about yourself when you wear it for the first time out in public and then maybe your girlfriend bought a new purse at the same time but hers was more expensive and maybe hers has a brand name on it and then all of a sudden your new purse doesn't look quite as shiny or nice anymore and you feel bad about yourself and your purse and and I think that that is such a normal human feeling and we have all felt that we've all been there and it's not nice is it it's it's just not a nice feeling um, you know, we've gone through this recently and, and it's actually, you know, that's my daughter's story to tell. So I'm not going to share that here because that's, it's not my story to tell anyway. So moving on from that, um, in our family, we believe that just because you can afford something doesn't mean that you should afford something. And we try to be grateful for what we have and, appreciate what we have, but you know, we're still human. You're always going to, uh, to admire what other people have, but yeah, remembering that in the back of your mind, comparison is the thief of joy can actually really help. And you know, Ada and DMC, they're just tools in the toolbox and it depends really on what you're going for. If that's what you can afford, to make your hobby enjoyable and keep on stitching, well, I think that's pretty awesome. It's still just as much fun. Anyways, I really appreciated that. I thought it was a really thoughtful, insightful comment, and I hope you enjoyed me sharing it with you. 
And I hope that no matter what you're stitching on, be it a beautiful 56 count linen that you have to have the most enormous magnifiers to see with your silk thread, or if you're stitching on your gorgeous hand-dyed Ada that's 18 count, or your gorgeous Ada that you bought from Michaels because you were super excited to start your very first cross-stitch project, I hope that it brings you just as much joy as your neighbor who's stitching on something completely different. Because you're a stitcher, and we just like to pull thread through fabric. Um, anyways, I thought that was, I thought that was great. Let's be grateful. Okay, this next one was, now what was the question here? Mm, she, okay, so Sonia. Sonia wants to know if I could show a close-up of how you stitch on linen. I picked some up, but I'm still kind of nervous to use it. Okay, so Sonia, as you can see, I'm sorry, I'm not stitching on linen today. I'm stitching on some Ada, but I will, I'll try to stitch on some linen next week, and I'll try to bring the camera nice and close. So, but lots of, there's, there's lots of other uh, people who've stitched on linen. It's, it's not a, no, it won't be something new, but maybe people will find it interesting. Uh, okay, so that leads me to the last thing that I wanted to talk about today, and I am going to be talking about this again briefly on Monday. This, and it has nothing to do with this project, it's with my other project, the True Blue project. I am working on that. I had talked about it on Monday and the Monday previously, that, and I called it a Congress cloth. And I showed a nice up-close picture of it, and I said I was going to do it today, but I didn't bring it with me. It's not Congress cloth. What I'm stitching True Blue on is actually called Hardanger fabric. I was mistaken about that. So the difference between the two, and, and I'll show them up close on Monday, Hardanger fabric is in the Ada family of weave. So it has two threads on the warp and the weft. Okay, so the warp is, I wanna make sure I'm going the right way. Anyways, I, doesn't, I don't think it matters which way I'm going to hold it because I'm not going to know which way they had it on the loom. But the warp and then the weft, okay? So there are two threads together in the warp and then two threads together in the weft. And then your needle makes the square there over those two threads that are together, okay? Now linen or even weave or Congress cloth. Congress cloth is in the same family as canvas, like a mono canvas. So it's much, much, much stiffer than linen. You can't compare Congress cloth with linen, but like linen, it has one thread in the warp and one thread in the weft. But Congress cloth is much, much stiffer like canvas. So that's the difference between Congress cloth and Hardanger fabric. Now, Hardanger fabric like is like is very much like Ada, but it comes in a smaller count. It comes in a 22 count, whereas I believe Ada only goes to a 20 count. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think Ada only goes to 20. Hardanger fabric comes in a 22. Congress cloth comes in a 24 or 25 count. So Congress cloth is going to be even smaller. And it gives a really, really beautiful finish when you stitch one thread over one so you can do really nice tiny things and my hard anger fabric for my true blue I am doing one thread over one so I apologize if anything that I said on the last two Monday floss tubes confused anyone or if somebody purchased some Congress cloth and it comes and it was even smaller than they thought it was gonna be because I made an incorrect uh, statement however and this all came up because a really, really nice viewer sent me a question through Facebook and um, I had my friend Kathy, I was discussing it with her and she said, actually, no, that's Hardanger. Um, and she described the difference to me. And I wanted to thank the person who sent me that question because, you know, I do not mind questions. I don't mind being gently corrected. As long as it's done with kindness, I think that this is, you know, I always tell my piano students, mistakes are how we learn. And that's really, 
important. Mistakes are how we learn. I am never, ever going to be 100% accurate in my knowledge. And, you know, that's how I learn too. I'm certainly not an expert at any of this stuff. I just have fun doing it. And, you know, hopefully we learn some things along the way. So I hope that I hope that was helpful and I, I hope I got it right this time. Um, but if I didn't, I'm always willing to correct myself again. So that's it for me. I am going to get going. I'm going to quickly get this uploading to my computer so that I can upload it to YouTube and have a visit with you guys tonight. I am going to be posting progress pictures of my work this weekend on my Instagram page. I have two Instagram feeds. One for sort of my more personal stitching and knitting and, you know, some a little bit of family stuff. Not a lot. I try to, I try to keep my kids out of there as much as I can. Um, but my, my personal one is at Off The Grid Needle Arts. And then I have one for my project bag business as well, which is at Evertotes. And so um, uh, over on at Off The Grid Needle Arts, I'm going to post some progress pictures this weekend and maybe a few pictures from my retreat as well because um, it's a beautiful place where I am and I'm really looking forward to relaxing this weekend. And I'm even going to have a nap today which I'm super excited. I'm probably more excited about having a nap than I should be, but, uh, but that's all good. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. This weekend, believe it or not, already on Sunday is high tea. So I hope you will join me on Sunday. My video on Sunday is going to be later than usual because I won't be getting back home until mid afternoon then I will record the video. So I wouldn't look for Sunday high tea video until Sunday evening, but I hope you'll join me in celebrating the last Sunday of the month with something special from your stash, whether it's an old whip that you haven't touched in years that you decide really needs to come out and play, or maybe it's something special from your stash that you'd like to start that's been kitted up and sitting in a closet and, you know, it's just too nice to not be enjoyed by you. I hope you love what you have. I hope you enjoy your weekend and I'll see you on Sunday. Happy stitching.